Now in this video, we'll be getting into some of the basic configuration of point-to-point -point GRE over internet. And then we'll also implement some routing protocol over it. And we'll, well, the main intention of this lab here is to ensure that my 192.168 one dot network should communicate with 192.168 two dot network. And for that, we are going to build one virtually a point to point connection between router one, router two. So that's something what we are going to build a GRE tunnel between router one and router two. So the first step, let's configure some point to point tunnel. So I'm going to build one logical GRE tunnel between router one to router two. So let's get into the command line. I already have a reachability between router one to router two. And le again, let's go and verify from the router one. I should be able to ping to router two, router two public IP address. Now we need to ensure that before you build a tunnel, there should be reachability between the GRE source, tunnel source and tunnel destination addresses. I already have reachability based on the default setup configurations. Now I want to build a tunnel, so I'll go to router one and the configuration is very simple. We need to create one logical tunnel interface. And now we need to tell define tunnel source and the tunnel source can be IP address. Either we can define the IP address of 15.001 or we can also define the name of the interface. Like we can simply say a zero by zero. So both, both works fine here. Uh, let, let me go with IP address here, 15.001. So I'm going to type the IP address of 15.001. So 15.001 and the tunnel destination, the tunnel destination I'm going to use it as 25.002. That is router two public IP address. And after that, we need to define some IP address for the tunnel. So I'm going to use the IP address as 10.0.12.network. It can be any private address. And I'm going to use it as uh, 10.0.12.x uh, network with slash 24 subnet mask. I'll be using one on the router one and I'll be using router two will be two. That, that's it. So the same configurations you can go with on the router two as well. On the router two, we need to create one tunnel interface and that tunnel interface can be any number. It can be, it is just locally significant. No need to match on both the sides. And then I'm going to define some tunnel source. Now the tunnel source I'm giving S0 by 0 interface or IP address. In my scenario, I can give 25.002 and the tunnel destination will be 15.001. And then we need to define the IP address. I decided to use 10.0.12.2 on the other side. Now you can see the tunnel interface is up. We don't need to give no shutdown command because it's a logical interface. So if I give show IP interface brief, I can see the tunnel one to interface is up and up. And I should be able to ping to the opposite side of the interface that is 10.0.12.1 as if it is a more like a point to point connection. So we can ping from this point to this point as if it's a point to point connection and that's it. So we are done with the first step configuration and the configuration is very simple. Now the next thing we want to ensure that the router one LAN users, that is 192.168 one dot network, should be able to communicate with 192.168 two dot network. Now to make that possible, we need to configure some routing protocol. Now GRE allows you to have some uh, routing or multicast traffic to send over it. So I'm going to run EHRP. I'm giving no auto summary and advertising the LAN interface. That is 192.168 one dot network and I'm advertising the WAN interface. That is my 10 dot network, the GR interface. Now the same thing, I'm going to do it on the router two as well. On the router two, I'm going to say uh, 192.168 two dot network, which is in the LAN and then 10 dot network on the WAN. Now, after some time, I should see the neighborship established between the router two and router one. And if you try to verify the neighborship show IP EHRP neighborship, you can see the router 2 is forming the neighborship with 10.0.12.1 over a tunnel interface that is one to tunnel interface. And then if you verify the routes in the routing table, I can see the route of the routing of the router 1 LAN and I can ping to 192.168.1.1 uh, source from my 192.168.2.2 which is my LAN interface as if it's it's, it's like a directly point-to-point -point connections. 
Now the same thing, I should see the same thing on the router 2 as well. And I should be able to ping, already we tested that. Let me try trace. 192.168.2.2. I can see it shows as if it is directly going to 10.0.12.2. It's directly going on this interface. But actually what happens is when you're sending any packet, let's say this is my IP packet here, which is including the source IP address is 192.168.1.1 and the destination address is 192.168.2.1. So that is your actual IP packet. So once it is uh, moving through the router, once it reaches the router, the router is going to add some uh, GRE header that's, that's, that contains the source IP. The source IP will be 15.001 and the tunnel destination IP and the destination IP will be 25.002 and the actual forwarding of your packet happens based on this outer header which means it, it will simply send it to 25.002 and then it reaches because because based on the routing you know it, to reach this the next stop is 10.0.12.2 that's something what we have given and this will go over tunnel interface tunnel 1.2 and then tunnel one two says okay if you are going via tunnel interface then you you must add this header and the source address will be 15.001 and the destination is 25.002 and once it reaches the router two it is going to remove the remove the outer header and it will forward as a normal based on this one so that's how we can configure a normal basic point to point uh, tunnels and that's something what we have we did we we did the configuration of point to point and then we have implemented some routing protocol like in this case i'm using ehrp to have reachability between the router one and router two lan networks